In this video, I'll show you how to splice a water-cooled weld cable for $10 in 10 minutes. Water-cooled weld cable is a hollow rubber tube surrounding a copper conductor. Between the tube and the conductor is the cooling water. The cooling water is in direct contact with the copper conductor and is under some pressure which complicates the splice procedure a little bit, but not too much. We'll start by cutting the rubber tube, pushing it down, and cutting the copper conductor at a different place. This will let us slide in a brass barbed fitting. Then we can rejoin the copper conductor with a simple butt splice. When I attempt a repair project, I always worry that Halfway through, I'm going to get a rude shock and realize that the guy who did the YouTube how-to video edited out one hour of swearing. I don't want to be that guy, so here's how this repair really works. This is a standard Wellcraft water-cooled well cable. It's used in the WP series of torches. It's good for 250 amps. The tape is to help prevent fraying of the braided outer sleeve. Here I'm cutting the outer rubber tube. That's the part that holds the water in. But I'm being careful not to nick the inner copper conductor, because I'm going to cut that conductor at a different place. Stainless steel surgical forceps are really convenient, although you could probably get by with a pair of needle nose pliers and some rubber bands. I'm using the forceps to hold the cable in place while I pull the outer rubber sleeve down to expose the part of the conductor that I want to cut. I can get away with this because the rubber sleeve is kind of stretchy. Here I'm using a second pair of forceps to hold the conductor in place while I cut it. It's sort of like plain doctor, only not as much fun. I've laid out the barbed union and the butt splice in the way they're going to lie in the finished product. This way I can cut the conductor right in the center of the butt splice. I can take off this pair of forceps because this side is not under tension but I must absolutely not release the other side. Here I'm sliding on the heat shrink and two hose clamps. If I forget this step later, I'll be embarrassed. I'm squeezing the hose clamp so that it will slide over the tube easily. Getting the barbed union to slide into the tube is going to be a little bit difficult, so it's important that it be lubricated with fine bourbon. This barbed union is pretty well suited for this task because it has thin walls which allow a bigger water passage, and it's a little shorter than the one you get at Home Depot, and its central ridge is a little bit narrower, and all those things turn out to be helpful. But with that said, the barbed union you get at Home Depot will work. You don't have to buy ours. The song makes me feel like I should be wearing slippery shoes and twirling a girl. If I cut my copper conductor at the right place, then about a half inch will be sticking out of the brass barbed union. That's where I'm going to crimp my butt splice. For our parts kit, we've chosen a butt splice that is nickel-plated, seamless, and has very thin walls. The thin walls let the cooling water pass unobstructed, at the cost of a little bit of strength. But we've tested it, and if you crimp hard, the splice will withstand all but the most determined jerk. With that said, the Home Depot butt splice, which is thicker, will work as well. Just be sure you leave a little room for the cooling water. 
Later on, I'll be glad I did that. The second crimp is not difficult, although rounding up all the copper hairs was so annoying that after I filmed this, I went back and changed our parts kit. Now we use a butt splice with slightly flared ends. It slides on much easier. Just be sure you squish the flared ends so that they don't obstruct the water flow too much. Although, it's okay if you obstruct it a little bit, because the flow rate is actually quite low. And if you blow on the end of a brand new well cable, you'll be surprised at the back pressure. I apologize for showing you this part but I wanted this to be real. Let's try it this way so you can see. This is just a cheap pair of crimpers from Home Depot. I'm using the 14 to 16 gauge non-insulated crimp dies because they give me a nice deep dimple. Now I'm making a nice straight row of dimples all the way up and down the butt splice so that I leave a nice straight channel for water flow. At ArcPig, cable splicing is not really our business. We just had to solve this problem in the course of figuring out how to wire our high-frequency arc starter stabilizer into water-cooled well cable. Pushing the tube over the barbs requires a little bit of muscle and a little bit of lubrication helps as well. If you're a professional welder, then you already know about high-frequency starter stabilizers. If you are not a professional welder, well, may we suggest you visit arcpig.com because touchless ignition makes welding a lot more fun. Now it's time to push the hose clamps over the fitting. At this point it's important that my brass barb fitting not have too prominent a central divider. I honestly don't know if you should leave the tape on or not. Here I'm taking off the tape, which will let the braided outer sleeve fray quite a bit, but it's all going to be covered with heat shrink too, so it's probably moot. That was a close call. Better be safe. I apologize that these little hose clamps are hard to see, because they're small and they're black. They have little ears on them. That's what I grab with the pliers to pry them open. But I don't want those ears to stay there. So now I'm pinching them, which bends them over and makes them break off pretty easily. You can use any kind of hose clamp. In the kit that we sell at arcpig.com, we include these nice little low-profile clamps that will give you an excellent cosmetic final result. But the big, ugly worm drive clamps will work as well. This part is a little boring, but it might make it more interesting for you to know that disaster is about to strike. This is take two of this video, and for authenticity, I have felt compelled to actually drink the bourbon both times.
Now the last and most satisfying step, the heat shrink. We've tested a few kinds of heat shrink, and in our splice kit that we sell at arcpig.com, we include heat shrink that is tough and abrasion resistant. But honestly, any heat shrink will do. 